One of the problems with having a corrupt mainstream media is that regular people often don't have time to do their own research into big stories. That's exactly what we see happening with the Russiagate situation and with the coup with the Ukraine gate situation. The media is corrupt, they're just mouthpieces for the establishment and particularly the Democratic Party, and therefore the average person who's working a 9 to 5 doesn't have time to go through all the little details and get the real truth of what's going on. So I wanted to put together a little video that explains how absurd the Democrats and the media defense of Joe Biden's quid pro quo in which he extorted the Ukraine with 1 billion US tax dollars to fire the prosecutor looking into his son is. I'm going to leave out a lot of details and damning evidence. Almost all of it is evidence that would actually make Joe Biden look worse. And instead, I'm just going to make the story real simple and focus on the bare bones that we all agree on happened. So I put together a PowerPoint and we'll go through it and discuss exactly why this narrative is so dumb. So first off is this gentleman Zolchevsky. So understand a little bit of the background. The Ukraine is a place that's been considered corrupt and had corruption going on for decades, much like most countries of the old Soviet bloc. And we even have corruption in our own country. What had occurred was there was a coup and an overthrow of the sitting president, Yakanovich. Yakanovich was more of a pro-Putin Ukrainian president. And he was ousted, probably with the help of the United States, and a pro-US president, anti-Putin president named Poroshenko was put in. The Poroshenko administration sought to end and get rid of all of the hangers-on to the previous pro-Putin administration. These were oligarchs that were connected to the former Ukrainian president, Yakanovich. One of these gentlemen is a man named Zolchevsky, and that's where our story begins. Zolchevsky is an oligarch that is considered corrupt by Obama, his entire administration, Biden, most of our allies in the EU, the IMF, etc., they all say that this Zolchevsky character is corrupt, and for the purposes of this, we'll agree and take at face value that he's corrupt. He owns the biggest gas company in the Ukraine, a company by the name of Burisma. Now remember, Biden and Obama think that Zolchevsky's corrupt, so that's where we begin. Zolchevsky owns this company, Burisma, and on the board of directors of Burisma is Hunter Biden. That's Joe Biden's son. Now, Hunter was getting paid over $80,000 a month to be on this company, despite the fact that he had no expertise in the gas industry and no expertise with Ukraine. Now, at the same time that Hunter Biden's appointed on the board of directors of this company, Joe Biden is appointed to be the point man for dealing with Ukraine. One of his primary objectives was to ouster the corruption that he and the Obama administration felt was occurring in the Ukraine, particularly people like Zolchevsky he felt should be brought to justice. So for some reason, Hunter Biden's getting an exorbitant amount of money. Keep in mind, as a member of a board of directors on a gas company like this, most people in legitimate board of directors of gas companies are making around $20,000 a month. Hunter Biden's making four times that amount despite having no expertise. So it seems like something strange is going on. Now, there's a prosecutor who starts to look into Zolchevsky and to the gas company Burisma. That prosecutor's name is Victor Shokin. Shokin has said that he specifically named Hunter Biden as one of the people that he was investigated and wanted to talk to. We know that he was at least considered the point man for this investigation. Now, the Biden and Obama administration said that Shokin was corrupt. That's why the media is saying that the quid pro quo that was offered by Biden and admitted, remember, Joe Biden admitted in the interview with the Council on Foreign Relations, he said, yes, of course, I was the one who said, you won't get this billion dollars unless you fire this prosecutor, Victor Shokin. Now, people like me and you and every average objective person in the world could say, wait a minute, a vice president, a high-ranking executive authority in our country used one billion U.S. tax dollars to force the firing of a prosecutor that was looking into his son? That's worthy of an investigation. And of course, we'd all be right. But the media and the Democrats say, no, 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 no. How dare you peddle that conspiracy? They say it was okay for Joe Biden to do this because they just all take it face value. Shokin must have been corrupt. We know Zolchevsky was corrupt and Shokin was the man looking into him and Shokin was corrupt for not prosecuting Zolchevsky. Therefore, it was perfectly fine, say the Democrats and the media, for Biden to issue a quid pro quo with a billion U.S. tax dollars until this person was fired. Because they claim you don't want to give a billion dollars to a country where corrupt people like Zilchevsky are allowed off the hook because prosecutors aren't really looking into him. Now let's think of what that really means. Obama's administration and Joe Biden in particular are saying they actually wanted Joe Biden's son Hunter Biden and his company Burisma investigated harder. 
Does that make any sense to anyone who knows anything about politics or family or anything of that nature? Joe Biden is literally claiming my son's company wasn't being investigated hard enough. That's why I issued a quid pro quo to ensure the prosecutor looking into him was fired. That makes no sense whatsoever, but that's the lie that we're being told. A lie that has to be believed so much that the media and Democrats say that anyone who doesn't swallow it is peddling conspiracy theories and must be rejected. And if you're Trump or connected to him, then you must break the law. You must be breaking the law to want to investigate this. So let's see what further happens then. Because, if, okay, if they want Zolchevsky and Burisma investigated harder, shorter, surely then, once the corrupt prosecutor Shokin was fired, then an investigation till Zilchevsky and Burisma really must have happened, right? Well, the case first went to an interim prosecutor and then went to the NABU. The NABU is an anti-corruption agency with investigative agency within the Ukrainian government that was modeled after our own FBI. Now, the NABU had close connections to the Obama administration. There were allegations that they worked to bury cases that were damning to Democrat donors and to people that the Obama administration liked. For example, former prosecutor Letsenko said that the NABU helped bury a case into the Anti-Corruption Action Center, which was an agency within the Ukraine that was financed by both Obama and George Soros. They were accused of using money improperly and receiving improper funds. But that investigation was buried by the NABU at the behest of the Obama administration. In addition, the NABU is also the very organization that worked with a politician in the Ukraine named Leshenko to act with the DNC and an operative named Alexandra Chalupa to interfere in the 2016 election. Now, that's a lot of names, and I know it sounds confusing, but just know this. The NABU was investigating Trump's campaign manager, Paul Manafort, and they had a bunch of dirt on Manafort. They admitted publicly to releasing that information to a DNC operative in order to interfere in the 2016 election. The reason that was stated, and I'll link an article that shows this, is because these people thought that Trump would be pro-Putin, and therefore they didn't like his policies. So they needed to intervene and make sure that Hillary won. That's how closely connected the NABU is to the Obama administration. They actually were in interfering in our election to help the Democrats. That's the agency now that has this investigation, that had worked with the Obama administration. So surely at this point, everything's adding up to Zilchevsky's finally going to be brought down. We know that Obama and Biden say that Zolchevsky's guilty and he's corrupt. We know that they wanted the previous prosecutor fired because they said he was corrupt in not investigating Zolchevsky and Burisma. So finally, now that it's with the one agency that they could trust that has worked actively with them, surely the NABU brought Zolchevsky to justice, right? Instead, what happened was within a year, the NABU closed the case into Zolchevsky. He wasn't held criminally irresponsible. He had to pay some fines and some back taxes. That's it. Now, you might be saying, wait a minute, how does this make sense? Everybody, Obama, Biden, people in the EU, people in the IMF, people in the Atlantic Council, which the IMF and the Atlantic Council both had people running it connected to George Soros, they all said Zolchevsky was corrupt. They all said that this prosecutor Shokin needed to go so we could have a real look into Zolchevsky. So how is it that when the NABU then comes up and basically buries the case, shouldn't all those people have been speaking up and said, wait a minute, this is outrageous? Yet Biden, Obama, and the others who refused to give a billion dollars until Shokin fired have remained silent. So the entire justification for the quid pro quo was we can't give a billion dollars until we're comfortable that there's a prosecutor that will actually investigate this gentleman Zolchevsky, his gas company Burisma, and hold them accountable because we know that they're breaking the law. Yet somehow the exact opposite happens. The new prosecuting group basically buries it and yet there's no outcry from Biden and Obama. How does this make sense? So we have to ask ourselves, what makes more sense? We have competing narratives. The first is the media and the Democrat and the Biden-Obama narrative. And that is that Obama, Obama and Biden wanted Shokin fired for not investigating Shilchevsky, someone they said was obviously corrupt, and his company Burisma that Hunter Biden was working for. In other words, Obama and Biden wanted his son's company investigated harder. That already doesn't make enough sense, but this is a narrative. And for some reason, once they got that prosecutor fired and gave the billion dollars, once the investigation was then buried by their ally agency, the NABU, for some reason, they remained silent. 
That's the official narrative that the media and the Democrats want you to believe. Now, here's the competing narrative. Obama and Biden wanted the prosecutor that was looking into Joe Biden's son removed. And they wanted it put with an agency that they could trust, that they've worked with before to bury cases, that in fact was actively interfering in the 2016 election to help the Democrats. That agency then succeeded in burying the investigation. And that explains why Obama and Biden haven't spoken up at the outrage of Zolchevsky still remaining a free man and not having to face justice, although they say he's corrupt. Which one of those versions of events makes more sense to you? Now, it sounds complicated, and I encourage you to go back and look at the PowerPoint, and please read the articles that I'll link below that shows this. But you know when the media narrative and the Democrat narrative is, actually, Biden wanted his son investigated harder. And then, oh shucks, when the agency that he trusted got it and buried the investigation, well, what are you going to do? It makes no sense. We need to start with this. I don't care what party you're a member of, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Green, Constitutional, etc. If you are a high-ranking executive official and you're using large sums of U.S. tax dollars for a quid pro quo to ensure that a prosecutor looking into one of your family members is fired, there needs to be an investigation, period. If there is no investigation, you would fully expect one, the media to have an investigation, which are not because they're just mouthpieces for the Democrats and the establishment. And second, the incoming administration to investigate that previous executive. That's exactly what Trump's doing. We don't have to prove that Joe Biden is guilty or Hunter Biden's guilty. All we have to prove is that the situation warrants an investigation. And if it does, that proves there's no impeachable case to Donald Trump. That's all he's trying to do to get to the bottom of whether or not Joe Biden improperly used $1 billion in order to bury an investigation and to fire the prosecutor that was looking into his son. Everybody, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Please share my video with some more people. I'm going to try to give more evidence as to break down real simply why the case for these coup uh, mongers in the media and in the Democratic Party is so absurd. And I'll be putting more videos out regularly. So thank you, everyone, and have a good one.